All right, so I'm in my sites directory where I, I tend to keep most of my sites. Let's dive in and create the application based off our kickoff repo. And I've updated this a bit since the last series, just a few things that were kind of bugging me about it. So we will be adding to it in this series, mainly the styles as there's some things that just need a little refinement in terms of styling. So uh, let's CD into the kickoff gem. And if you use that, it should go for it. And in that we have our template. So you would just do a rails new and we could call this trade trade app, something generic. And you want to pass the flag of M and then template, which is the, there's a template file in that folder called template.rb. And then with that, you can hit enter and run the command. It should go through and install all the bundled stuff, all the gems that we need and do some setup for us that would otherwise take probably an entire video for me to do. So I just wanted to kind of not do that and save you guys some time. Um, what do we call it? Trade app, something like that. So we're using devise for users, of course. You can roll your own users in Rails. Uh, devise just makes it a little, quite a bit easier. There's so much to think about in terms of users that unless it really calls for it, you don't really need to go above and beyond to create your own user base. It's up to you if you want to though. Okay, so we're good to go. In that file, I'm gonna just open it in my finder and drag it, the trade app folder that we created into my sites directory. See quite a few sites there. Okay, and then I'll CD out of this app, uh, directory into that one. So uh, trade app. Cool. So you can verify it's installed right if you run Rails S. I'm using 5.2. And then if I refresh this, we should see our app. It'll just say, hey, welcome. Cool. So I want to clean this up and use a little bit of different styling as opposed to what we have here. So first thing I'm going to do is install a couple of gems that we're going to use that aren't in our file by default. That's just to kind of give this app a little more oomph and I've got both of my as, as usual I've got both of my projects open the demo app and then the one that we're going to be creating so this one's the demo I was doing some last minute edits here before so here's our actual app trade app and what I want to do is go to the gym file first we will be using active storage so I want to uncomment this gym so we can Mini Magic let, lets you basically resize images on the fly, and it's awesome for that. So I'd really recommend uncommenting that. You'll get errors if you don't, and try to use different variants of sizes. Uh, we'll get into how we do that basically coming up. And I have these four gems installed. We won't really be using Sidekick all that much, but it is something we'll probably touch on in the future. It's kind of a way to do background processing in Rails. Uh, with combination of Redis. And most Rails apps tend to use that when they're gonna, I don't know that I need jQuery to be honest. So uh, Jim cram down is the main one we want. But yeah, most apps use Redis to run background processes like sending emails and stuff that are like notification based or transactional in the background to keep the app up and healthy as opposed to doing it all at one felt swoop. So it's just, a, a nice enhancement and more performant way to do something. Yeah, we'll get into all that technology maybe later. That's basically it though. I, I thought I had more gems, but just the cram down gem. And it's basically a Ruby adapter to allow for markdown in your views. So it'll render markdown as you type it into a form, not in real time, but it will output that way. Okay, so what we wanna do is generate the first model and it's going to be our trade model and it's going to feature a title a description and we're going to reference the user since we already have a user model based on that setup we ran on the kickoff so you'll see class user we, we've got device even our routes are set up to have device 
going. So let me go find that. So we're rooting to home index right now. Just move, remove that comment. Okay, so what I'll do is generate that model and we'll do rails, generate. I'm gonna use a scaffold. These are sometimes frowned upon, but for the sake of learning, I think it's okay. String, we'll have a title that's a string, a description that's a text based column, uh, text. And then we can just type user references. And this basically does the, the dirty work of adding the association between a trade and a user. So let's run that. Should do quite a bit of scaffolding. It creates a migration, our model, a bunch of tests, our controller, and the views. You'll see some JavaScript files and the SAS files we really just don't need, but uh, feel free to keep them if you want. One thing I do want to delete is the scaffold CSS conflicts with what we have. And while I'm at it, I'm going to update my functions file to include what we used in the other project. Feel free to copy and paste this from the repo. I would recommend doing that because this one's not really focused on styling. So paste that in. All I'm adding in is some nudge classes, uh, some flexbox based stuff, maybe some different types of text justification and stuff like that. Just some simple stuff, nothing crazy. So I'm going to save that. Also added, let's see if I added any more than that. that conversations, direct uploads. So we'll get into the direct upload style at the probably the very end. It's kind of just an enhancement to our image upload form, or at least when we get to that point. So let's go and change our config routes to be, oh, this is the old project. Get a new project. We go so I'll go to config routes again and we have resources trades that came from that scaffold and devised for users and we can route to trade.index and that just gives us a starting point as opposed to just a general random welcome controller so we'll need to run rails db migrate because we generated that scaffold if you want to double check that scaffold is to your liking Feel free to go to, uh, where are we at? DB, migrate, and then create trades. And you'll see this stuff here. And it creates a foreign key on the user model as well as references it. By running that, if you're, if you're confused at what that really does, it adds trade and belongs to user. It also creates this fancy foreign key references column in the database. So it's kind of a enhanced version of doing it by hand that you could do in the command line. So I'll do rails db migrate. Awesome. Next, we want to integrate active storage and just get it set up for use. And you need to initialize that from the command line. This generates a pretty big migration that just allows for active storage to do its thing. So this is the command you'd run. Rails Active Storage install. It'll just say copy migration to that. If you want to check it out, you'll see all this craziness going on here. So it just adds these things, um, the blobs and attachments and stuff like that. It's really cool though, because you don't have to add like a, a column in your database to support a new image or something like that. It just happens automatically. So it, Active Storage is really cool in that regard. So I'll do Rails DB migrate one more time. Cool. Okay, so what we want to do with that is first update our user model to have association to our trades. And we can do that by going to user and just saying has many trades. Okay. And then our trade model is going to have, it's going to belong to a user, but then we're going to want to has many attached. This is active storage magic here. Images. And then we'll do dependent. Just 
destroy. And basically what that is, it's saying you can have one image based on whatever model you're using or have many and active storage basically integrates this for us and we can call it what you want at this point. So I'm just going to call it images by default, just because that's, I don't plan on using any more images on this app later. Uh, but you might be more discreet about that naming convention and call it something different. So maybe consider that. And the dependent destroy is the concept of if the user or if the trade is deleted, these images would be too, as opposed to them just staying in the database. Okay. And then we want to next add our tr trade controller, give that support for our new image concept. So we have in the params, uh, permitted parameters, but since we added that new uh, active storage area, we need to do images and then it's going to be a fancy array looking thing. So that's going to justify adding multiple images. If you just had one image, you can, instead of has many, you can just say has one image as a, a variant there if you wanted to that would just make that be image as opposed to this array so we'll save that and that should be all set we do need to update this controller to basically reference our, our user at any given moment when something new is created so on the new this is mu much like any other series we've done where we're doing the same kind of finding the current user and then getting the trades and then building it and we'll do the same on this one. And let's see, create, update, destroy. That should be all we need on this controller. So uh, before we do create a trade, we do want to authorize the user though. So this is part of devise for action. Authenticate user, bang, and then you could just say accept colon index show. And that's simply saying, hey, make the user be logged in unless they're on the index or show path. And that just makes sense. So, okay, so we've got all of our paths now on our views. And that's because of our fancy scaffolding. And we can just basically update the HTML to work with that. So why don't we do that? And then I'll probably move on to the next part of the video. First, I want to do the index view. And this is going to feature a partial that we'll end up using just as a re an easier way to organize this. So I'll call it title is one and just call it trades. And what's great is you can pass in a partial here as opposed to just doing uh, all the code. It makes for a nicer view. And you can just render the trade. And Rails is smart enough to know what that means. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But we need to pass in the trade local variable here. So we'll do that by, just by doing this. So when it comes to rendering the trade, it will go by the naming convention. And you can go and create a file in the trades folder underscore partial and just call it trade and within that you can actually have the actual data you want to repeat so this will be a card card image a lot of this is just Bulma markup so bear with me if it's kind of mundane so here we're gonna have an image tag and it's gonna have our trade images and we're gonna get the first one and then with active storage, you can have variants. And this is where that gem uh, called mini magic comes into play. We can resize on the fly, which is awesome. And set 640 by 480 here with a less than sign or a greater than sign. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, and then we'll comma separate that and just link to the trade. So the image itself is linking to the trade, but we're displaying the first image that was uploaded.
So here in the figure itself, we've got a Gravitar helper and typically I use the gym and it's it's nice, but it was I was running into issues about quality. So I actually rolled my own Gravitar and it's gonna be a helper that we create and I'll probably put it in our application helper. And this is going to be called Gravatar 4. All right, so we have a Gravatar 4 helper here. We're passing the user our options. Basically, the option that I'm going to use is just the size. And that's, there's a default set if you don't actually set one. And we go and get the digest of an MD5 fashion of the user email. Then we'll set the size as the options of that size. And then grab the Gravatar URL and pass in the parameters that we set. And then display an image with that actual information. So that's how that all works. All right, guys. So I had an error in my routes file and it took me way too long to figure it out. But I misspelled trades. I put trade and definitely don't do that. Put trades. And... Finally, I got the page to render. I, I troubleshooted for quite a bit there, and oh my god. Okay, so last we left off is adding the Gravatar 4 helper, and that is going to be in our trade partial, which gets rendered this way in Rails. And it's a neat little configuration you can do just to kind of save some space in your views. And within that file, we have all of our data here. We've got our Gravatar that we just mentioned. I set the size to 96. Uh, just to start with, even though this file is it's styled to be 48, so I'm just kind of doing a retina quality hack there. Um, and then we posted the trade name, the username, and the time ago it was created. And there's a fancy helper called Time Ago in Words that allows you to just kind of get a, a very nice uh, date based on when that record was published. So with that done, we can add in the show view and probably do just a little bit of copy and pasting here. I will copy and paste the form side of it because we'll talk about that and then the show view I'll actually type because it makes more sense to do that. This is Bulma. Inside of it, I've, I have a loop of any errors that come about. You might have not seen me do this in other videos, but it's a nice way to present anything that comes back that may not have made the form submit. Uh, it's just something I like to put into my forms if it kind of helps UX uh, side of things. So because of Bulma being Bulma, we have to optimize it with simple form. Simple form puts its own wrapper around the elements. So here I'm kind of taking a step back from that and putting our own touch on it. Uh, we have an input for the name or the title of the trade. The description is a text area denoted by the text area class. And then finally, here's where it gets a little more tricky. We've got an input field that is going to be as a file, and that's part of simple form. You can do an input as any kind of HTML file input of some sort. And within that, we are going to set multiple true, and that's so we can use multiple images on the initial upload of this file field. And then a nice feature of Rails is putting a direct upload to true, and that just allows you to hook into some events that happen on the form itself. So with that done, we can hook into some JavaScript later. And show, like I showed you at the beginning, it was more or less just the progress indicator of each file that gets uploaded and the file name. So all of that said, this is the styling we're using and that's how the form is going to look. That's going to render on both our edit and new page or new routes, I should say. So with these, it's kind of a no brainer copy and paste too. So I'll probably do that. So edit will be just the form and a title. And the, we're rendering the form partial here, just like we were in passing in trade as the trade we're getting from the controller. And the same is true for new. We could probably just copy and paste this. And I put just a backlink just because. And with that done, we can move on to our show view and we should be set in terms of getting this to look the way we want. So the show view is gonna be a little bit different and a little more involved just to get the images and stuff the way we like. 
So let me pull that up and start. We'll do columns. Here's where that markdown gem is going to come in handy. We're going to sanitize, which kind of just is some security, uh, making sure there's no code that goes crazy inside here. If I could spell sanitize, and then we'll pass in the markdown helper, which comes from that cram down gem, which we actually still need to create. It's just kind of a loop into it. And we're going to call it this markdown to HTML and we'll pass in the trade description. So before we go on, I'll go ahead and make that helper. And we can do it in the, just the application one again. And with this, we're gonna want to call it what we did in the view. So markdown to HTML, and we'll just pass in text, whatever you pass in. And this is how we hook into that gem, so cram down is a class and then it has a, another class document and we can create a new one passing in that text and you can pass in options here so input I don't not quite sure what GFM means but then we'll do to HTML so basically we're just wanting any markdown we actually author to render as HTML and that's that's all that's doing and I mean it's doing a lot but it's that's essentially it. Here we have another helper which I created called Trade Author, and it's just a, a handy way to wrap a bunch of logic into one little area. So we'll press and type in there. And while I have that in mind, I'll just go ahead and create it. So, same place, application helper, trade author. And this one, I don't think we're going to pass anything through. I'll have to double check. We are going to pass the trade. So, from that, we'll just get user signed in. This is built in from device. So we're just kind of check checking that this is a valid case, and the current user ID is equal to the trade dot user ID, which is a column already on our trade table in our database. Since we did that user references flag, so from this point forward, I could pass in the trade here, and it should validate true if I authored this. Then I could be able to edit the trade itself. So let me actually update the show area here to reflect that. I'll do background light. Below that div, we want to check if the current user dot ID is not equal to at trade dot ID. Oh, excuse me, user ID. Do these things. We'll actually have an else statement here too. So this is stuff we'll get to, but it's going to be a placeholder for now, I think. So a link to a message the trade dot user dot name and then you could pass in whatever route that ends up being which we'll get to and then we'll have a class oops 
uh, button and then is link and then else we'll link to a what will be a conversations path so we'll just say link to conversations you can call it whatever you want but it'll eventually be a path we create we haven't created it yet so it would error out if I passed anything in there but that's essentially it so we'll save that down check it out make sure we don't have any errors uh, refresh our page and um, real quick I want to get rid of the footer in fact why don't I in initialize this file to be a little more like our original design so we have our nav bar class here we can do nav bar I think I could just pass in is link and it'll be blue Yep, okay. And then we need to update our trade app to be white. So I think it's has text white. Yep, okay. And our buttons are not looking great. So let's make those. I'm actually going to reference my other layout file. So I did some reconfiguration here to make this a little more enhanced, I recall. So I'll walk you through it. All right, so we have our nav bar that's been there in our kickoff app from before. And then I want to link to a new trade eventually that is for a user who signed in. And besides that, if they can only be signed in to see their account and link to edit their account or even log out. Else they will be uh, seeing a field of sign in, sign up buttons. And they're all with this is link class, so they're blue by default, but they do have a uh, hover state that's a little darker, so that's nice. So all in all, that ends up being what we want out of the box. If you create a user at this point, you'll see the fields to be able to add a new trade. So I'll just create one to show. Oh, you have to actually sign up first, Andy. There we go. So we're signed in. We should see a new trade button in our account. Looks like there's maybe a little issue there that that should be like that one but it's not so eh, it's not a huge deal right now but you can edit your account just like you would before this button needs to be updated too sorry about that um, anyway that's device out of the box here's our trade we can add a new one at this point let's verify we can so i'll say uh, gibson let's boom awesome so with that, we have our show view or index view set up and our controls to edit and optimize this actual listing. This is a makeshift conversations link right now, but we'll be able to use that eventually coming up. So I'll get to that part in the next video. So definitely check that out. And for now, I think we'll call this one good. For the next video, we'll probably end up making more users and creating more trades just to show the variances in state. Uh, but besides that, let's get to where we're creating the messages and conversations next.